Greetings everyone, alright, let's go over a polar example from an old AP exam. Again, this is 2011 form B. Um, and so, we have a polar curve R given by R of theta equals 3 theta plus sine theta. And just for theta between 0 and 2 pi inclusive. And in part A, we want to find the area in the second quadrant enclosed by the coordinate axes and the graph of R. So a key part, key part to this is the fact that this is enclosed by the coordinate axes. You don't even really need to see the picture of this. It's just one polar curve, and I am going to show you a picture, but it caught between the polar, sorry, caught between the um, coordinate axes, so the x-axis and the y-axis. So if you're thinking about revolving around the unit circle with positive angle measures, the positive x, I'm sorry, the positive y-axis rotate into the negative x-axis, that's the second quadrant. Well, what angles would we rotate from start from and rotate 2 to get that second quadrant. Well, that's going to be from pi over 2 to pi. And so I know my limits of integration. I only have one curve to deal with. And so if we know how to find the area with a polar, uh, a, a, that a bipolar curve, we already know that formula, then we can write it down immediately without even drawing the picture. But this is number 2, and your calculator is allowed, and you can take a look at the picture if you want. So we're looking at finding the area of all this stuff over here, you know, in, in the second quadrant. And so to answer this question, um, all we need to do is set up our um, area as, the, you know, it's going to be the integral of 1 half r squared d theta from alpha to beta. And once we know that, we can work this out rather quickly. So our area, you know, we're going to have 1 half the integral from pi over 2 to pi and r squared, <laughs> I was saying hour, but r squared plus, which is 3 theta plus sine theta quantity squared d theta. And then we just need to run that through the calculator. And if you run that through the calculator, I'm going to pause and see what the answer is. I'll be back. In running this to the calculator, you should get 47.513. That's a three-point question right there, although I don't remember. Uh, I can probably imagine um, what the, how the points are allocated. You probably got one point for the constant and the limit of integration, the one-half and the uh, pi over two to pi. Probably get one point for the integrand and one point for the final answer. Um, so, straightforward. Didn't even need to see it, but looking at it doesn't hurt. We're just area bounded by a polar curve, something we should be comfortable doing. Let's go on to part B. It says for pi over 2, less than or equal to theta, less than or equal to pi, there is one point P on the polar curve R with x coordinate negative 3. Find the angle theta that corresponds to point P. Find the y coordinate of point P. Show the work that leads to your answers. All right, so if we're looking for an x coordinate, what we're trying to do here is translate the polar curve back to a um, rectangular coordinate system. And so the way we do that, if you recall, is through parametric equations. We know how to rewrite x and y from polar back to um, you know its parametric forms. And so in working this out, we remember, hopefully, that x equals r cosine theta. And so for this, x is going to be 3 theta plus sine theta times cosine of theta. So that's how we get the x coordinate. But really, what is it? You know, do you remember? It said just what the x coordinate of negative 3. So all I'm doing is solving when this is equal to negative 3. That's all the question's asking at this point. We do have to figure out the y coordinate as well, but. That's not that hard. Um, it shouldn't be, at least. We just need to use our calculator wisely. So you should be graphing the, the expression that we have here um, for the polar curve. Graph this, and also make, make you know your f sub one of x on your calculator equal to this function, and make f sub two of x on your calculator equal to um, this value negative three, and then find out where they intersect. You know, so hopefully you can do that without much problem, uh, without any problems. If you need help with that, come and see me uh, soon so that we can make sure you understand that. If you do this right, you should get 
x is approximately equal to. Now we're talking about the second quadrant here, so we should get a negative x value. Uh, I have to go look it up. Hold on. Excuse me for misspeaking a moment ago. Um, we do have a neg negative x coordinate in the second quadrant, but our angle measure is what we're looking for here. So um, in the second quadrant, so our angle measure should be between pi over two and pi. Um, and so it should be more than pi over 2, which is uh, 1.57 approximately, less than pi. And if you work this out on your calculator, you get 2.01692 uh, should be the answer that you get for that. Now, what do we have to do? We have to find the y-coordinate at that moment. Okay, so the y-coordinate we should know is um, in polar taking polar to parametric, r equals, y equals r sine theta. And so y is equal to 3 theta plus sine theta times sine of theta. And all we have to do now is plug in the value of theta that we just obtained, 2.01692, and plug that in for theta here and get our y value. And that value is 6.272, if I'm remembering properly from switching screens. Note that in the approximation I left over here for x, I went to five decimal places. Um, we're going to use that value again. The answer it only needs to be correct to three decimal places, as we should well know. Um, so we only need to either put 2.016 or 2.017 if we round. But you should use at least four, if not five decimal places in your um, use of that number in this part of the uh, problem here. If you use the rounded number, your final answer will not be correct to three decimal places and you'll definitely be losing a point. And so you don't want that to be an issue. And so use more than three decimal places in all your, your intermediate calculations. All right, let's get to the last part, part C. By the way, part B was also three points. And um, I don't remember how they're allocated, but it's a three point question. A particle is traveling along the polar curve R so that its position at time t is x of t, y of t, such that d theta dt is equal to 2. Find dy dt at the instant theta is equal to 2 pi over 3 and interpret the meaning of your answer in the context of the problem. So a particle traveling around the curve, and we know d theta dt, we want to know dy dt, and so... Well, let's see if we can work what, what this is asking us to do here. So we know y is equal to r sine theta, or as we just looked uh, at a moment ago, 3 theta plus sine theta times sine of theta. And we want dy dt. Now this part of the problem recall uh, needs us to recall um, from the chain rule, how we can get from dy d theta to d theta, I'm sorry, dy dt. And in order to do that, from the chain rule, if you go back to your notes from the AB class, we had a similar relationship. It'll have different letters in it, but it'll look like this. It'll be dy over d theta times d theta over dt. And so, again, chain rule. Go look this up if you need to. It's in the book or it's in your notes from the AB class. Well, we're looking for dy over dt. Okay, that's what we want. dy over d theta we can figure out from what we have here on the screen. Um, I can take the derivative of all this mess up here with respect to theta. And then d theta over dt, they told us what that is. So we, that was just 2, if I remember correctly. And we can just plug that in. And so... And then, of course, this is when theta is equal to 2 pi over 3, so we'll have to plug that in. So, let's write y down over here. And let's, three of 3 theta sine theta plus sine squared theta. When we distribute, um, when we distribute sine of theta, so d theta, oh, I'm sorry, dy over d theta will be 3 sine theta plus... I just took the derivative of theta so far, and now we're going to take the derivative of the, the sine part, so it'll be 3 theta cosine theta. And then we'll have 2 sine theta cosine theta, which I'm going to squeeze in over here. And 
and then again we just need to evaluate this at 2 pi over 3 and multiply by 2 you know d theta um, over dt so I'm going to skip all of the uh, small little stuff so plug in 2 pi over 3 into um, dy over d theta in fact we can notate it like this when theta is equal to 2 pi over 3 and then we want dy over d theta times d theta over dt when theta is pi over 3 I don't know if you could sorry 2 pi over 3 man that's real sloppy I apologize okay theta is 2 pi over 3 I'm not sure you can see that that well but it's there so again plug that value in plug in um, 2 for d theta over dt and then we should get we should get negative 2.819 as the answer here now the interpretation in terms of the context of the question well this is telling us that the y coordinate with respect to time is changing um, in, uh, by negative value or is, is uh, its derivative is negative so this is telling us that the y coordinate of the point the y coordinate of the particle is decreasing at a rate of 2.819 um, 2.819 units per. I don't know what units they gave us on this. Um, let me see. I don't know. I don't know if we have any units to, to interpret this. Let's see. They don't have any units associated with it in the problem, so I don't need to mention any in my final analysis here. So at a rate of 2.89, and that's it. That's also a three-point question. Um, this is. You know, having us use, you know, bridge between polar and parametric equations a little bit and uh, applying our, our patterns and information that we've done. Hopefully that was helpful. Go study.